Throughout my life, I've dealt with a lot of things like depression and anxiety. Panic attacks made it hard to breathe, anxiety made it hard to think, and overall, they just made it hard to live. At the second half of 2021, things got really bad. The stress of dealing with all those things started to affect me physically. Panic attacks became extremely frequent, and I even started having strong side effects like losing control of my hands and arms, which led me to getting bedridden for a few months. If you're one of the two people who follow this channel, you might know that I'm mainly a musician. I've been releasing music for a few years, and even the track that you're hearing right now was made by me just for this video. But because of all those problems, I ended up not being able to even play instruments and make what I love anymore, which only worsened the situation. So one day, really late at night, while being stuck in bed for so long, I decided that I wanted to read something, and remembered that I had some manga from one, if not from my favorite artist laying around, and I decided to go through it. The artist in question is the famous Inyo Asano, creator of extremely well-regarded works like Oyazumi Pum Pum, A Girl on the Shore, What a Wonderful World, and much more. I was pretty familiar with his work and felt like it was something extremely unique, so I was really looking forward to it. The manga that I'm talking about is named Solanin, and on that day, late at night, while being bad reading and in a pretty bad state of mind, I didn't have an idea that I was about to start one of the best stories that I've ever seen, and one that I definitely shouldn't have read. Like most of Asano's other works, Solanin treats of really realistic and extremely relatable topics. The one that he likes to use the most is when he talks about the struggles of being a young adult thrown into the world, having to meet expectations while being pressured by everything around you, and the way that he normally tackles those topics is incredible. He really managed to beautifully tell those situations, and of course he comes off super relatable. Especially because this fear of being thrown out of the world is something that we all go through sometime in our lives. And it was something that I was living right at the moment. And the manga opens with exactly that. Here we're seeing the toss of one of our two protagonists, Meiko, who talks about how her daily commute to work is a time where she just feels hatred for the entire world. She works on a boring office job and is just a random employee at the bottom of the work chain. Seeing herself being swallowed by the pillars of adulthood, which in her words, is just that adults are made of who cares not caring about themselves, their acts, the world, and for her, the idea that they pay well here, so who cares? She's clearly dissatisfied by her position, having worked here for two years and just going along with it, pushing all the thoughts away. Those thoughts being the insecurities that come with adult life, not being someone that brings value or the realization of how boring life really can be, while she spends days upon days in a cage of falls. And in here, she talks about something that me and many others have probably gone through almost exactly the same. The magical and overwhelming feeling of moving to a big city for the first time. The sense of wonder and how almost everything seems alien and it's brimming with different opportunities. But then, with time, the feeling dissolves, and you're left with nothing but being lost in a heavy world of concrete. And then we also meet Taneda, Miko's boyfriend who's living with her and who's also our other protagonist. And in here, we see Meiko finally show glimpses of giving in and talking about leaving her job, which Taneda, in his lip state, asks simply why not. So, with the idea that it doesn't matter what happened, they will always be together, she ends up going through it and actually quits her job. After quitting, she quickly realizes how boring just wandering around nameless really is. And with Taneda seeing the weight of the words he said half asleep, a little bit of stress and uncertainty start to set in. But it was right here where I discovered something that I definitely wasn't expecting. You see, I went into this manga completely blind, and I didn't have any idea about the story or characters. So I was extremely surprised to see that on the side, Taneda was a musician in a band where he sang and played guitar. I've been talking a lot about how this manga was pretty relatable, but to find that someone in there was also a musician made me extremely excited, and really started to bring this to a whole new level for me. Another thing that really grabbed me about this manga was how Asano gave so much thought, even to his side characters. We see a lot of people going to similar situations of being lost in the world in their own unique ways, all carrying their doubts and problems and just trying their best. And it comes off really well, making those characters feel really human and full of life, from how Rip lives working on his family pharmacy or Kato is still stuck in college just trying to get by. We also see a new side of things, getting some glimpses of how the band view themselves and how they feel like they ended up just as a failure, a band that even with their love for music could never get anything out of it. And once again, for me, who's been making and releasing music for a few years now while searching for some kind of meaning, it really hit home, almost a little too much. 
then we learn that Taneda has been doing a part-time job that really overworks him, even to the point of not being back home for three whole days. And Meiko starts to wonder if maybe by quitting her job, she's unconsciously putting all the pressure on Taneda. But she still knows her reasons, and exactly what she wants not only for her, but also what she wants to say to Taneda as well. And that's where she finally asks him about how in truth, what he wants to do the most is to make music and propose that maybe he should get the band back together and as he tries to brush it off with how he's not really nothing special and he can compete with those who really try she keeps pushing about how in the end he's always making excuses and it's actually just scared of being criticized for the music he loves so much and just like before, you see it a little too close at home with that, now we finally get a glimpse of Tanita's thoughts we start to see what he really feels not being able to see who he is without comparing to other people and always lacking confidence to affirm himself. And for me, one of the most important things that instantly brought out the fear and anxiety that I always feeling back in full force is the idea that when you're serious about doing something, you always be surrounded by the feeling that there's no turning back. And as time passes, your options narrow more and more, which was something that had been hunting me for these past few years in every breath I took. But there was also another feeling the feeling of really wanting to play music. And after dwelling a lot through his messy thoughts, he finally decides to go against the world and try to pursue what he really wants. With the band now back together, they decide to jump straight into recording their first song, and try to capture all the feelings from that moment in a CD, and they're taking this pretty seriously. With a big weight lifted from everyone's back, things start to finally look brighter, and Taneda starts writing their first song, having to quit his job to focus on the band, but at the same time with the idea that if they don't get some kind of response for this record, he's breaking up the band. And with all that, they finally get to their last rehearsal before recording the first session, with the name of the song being... Solanin. Life goes on with finally some better days ahead. The weight of finally having made this difficult choice battles with all the weight from the uncertainty of what's going to happen from here on out. But for this moment, there's just one feeling in their minds, and this feeling is happiness. A few days later, they finally get the much-awaited call, and a meeting with a recording label is set. But in here, we see a really sad situation unveil, something that unfortunately is pretty common on our path on pursuing music. And that's the fact that this label that had called them up is not really interested in their songs. The agents give them the proposition of becoming a backup band for an idol, with concerts and TV appearances, talking about how this is a once in a lifetime chance and all that. While battling with the confused feeling of having your entire worth being broken down right in front of you, Ryder Sanita is about to speak up, Mako gets up and declines the offer. And this chance ends just like that. After some time, Taneda ends up bumping to the agents in a bathroom, and as the agent apologizes from wasting their time, Taneda talks about how he knows him and he was part of a band that inspired him a lot a long time ago, and started asking why. Why would someone like him abandon everything and just become a corporate sellout? He's just unable to comprehend how would someone feel like money is the only real important thing for them. And as the agent turns his back to live, he says one last thing. You and I are alike. Once again, this scene hit me like no other. A few years ago, in the same year that I was reading this manga for the first time, I too got contacted by a label, and even went further on to actually start working with them. Having the realization that things just couldn't work out, that all your worth could be being wasted by the second, and worst of all, having the feeling of the moment where you finally decide to take the one step and end the contract. The horrible feeling that maybe, at the right moment, you lost a really big chance. Those were all things that I had gone through just a few months before, and I couldn't believe at the time how real we felt reading this. All those horrible feelings instantly started rushing again, but I kept reading because I really needed to know that just like for me, I didn't want to believe that this would be the end. And with Taneda tanking Mako, they leave the building, putting all of that behind. A few days pass, and Taneda just feels unconcerned with the situation. They didn't get any other responses, and just like that, the entire month flew by. And even through those lazy days, the thoughts of not being in a job, not being something, still waited more and more in Mako's mind. And while they're slowly rowing a boat on a calm river, Taneda says something rather unexpected, and out of nowhere, says that he wants to break up. With Mako not understanding a thing, he says that he's thinking about going back to his hometown and working for his dad, and that he's already decided on also breaking up the band. And after leaving Mako speechless, he finally speaks that everything that Mako says just puts more and more pressure in him, and that as she doesn't know what to do, she just ends up forcing everything on Taneda. 
this comes completely out of nowhere and you don't even know how you should react. In the end, both of them just end up apologizing and going back home. But just as things seemingly start to go back to normal, Taneda just gets up and says that he's just going out for a walk. But just like that, he never came back. It had already been 5 days, Taneda's phone was broken so there was just no way to contact him and the only thing left to Mako was to worry about him. As she waits, a package arrived in her house, it's one of the CDs with Solanin that had been rejected from a label and for the first time she listened to the song. And that's when she thinks to herself that this is a breakup song. While she's struggling with all those feelings, their friends end up coming to the house to try to lift her up as she dwells in a mess of jumbled emotions and guilt about how she feels like every day was scary, that at any time anything could go wrong and she just didn't know what to do anymore, but that without Saneda, she wasn't sure if she could even live, and that wasn't a pleasant feeling. The next day, she wakes to a lot of voice in the house, and Taneda has finally called home out of nowhere. He talks about how it was a few rough days, and he was just working at the office, having gone back to his old job. But this time, he says that even though he's back working, he still continues with the band. And that even though he believed that his goal was to change the world with his music, in the end, he just wanted to play music with his friends and be by her side. As Miku calls him to finally go back home, he accepts. And just as he's about to once again make it clear how he feels for her, his phony battery dies. So he put his phone back in his pocket and just start heading home. Or thinking about her right now, he's just happy. And as Miko enthusiastically wakes up everyone in the house while announcing that Taneda is coming back, she finally starts feeling better again. So just like that, Taneda ends his life. I've been talking a lot about how this manga was becoming extremely relatable to me. Not only on the entire idea of young adults struggling to figure out a life as they're thrown out in the world, but especially with Taneda's journey. Everything he was going through, all his ideas, giving up of everything to your music, wanting people to hear you, everything was hitting extremely close to home. And especially with me being in my situation after so long, I already started to feel defeated with each passing day, to see this character that seemed to be following such a similar journey, ending up with that fate that had been looming over me and that I feared for my entire life, the moment hurt a lot. And after remembering everything that had started it all, he lays there, thinking about how he'll finally sing Mako a love song when he gets home. Now, Mako works at a flower shop, and after two months, he just completely lost, stuck being enveloped in this horrible situation. And she spends her days doing nothing, filled by maybes and what ifs, regret, sadness, those emotions just eat away at her. After some time, Taneda's dad comes to visit her, and so was left of Taneda's things. They talk about life, family, and most importantly, about Taneda himself, his love for music, and make even talks about how him and his dad are really alike. In the end, he decides to leave Taneda's stuff with Mako, and as she apologizes, he says that she's not to blame, but asks just for one thing, that she never forget about Taneda and that maybe her role is to prove that, in the end, he really existed. As everyone slowly starts to pick things up again, Mako's called them all together, and after a ping while holding Taneda's guitar, she then asks if she could join the band. And while they are called by surprise, they ask why does she want to join the band, as she doesn't even play guitar. But she makes it really clear how serious she is about this, and with that, she finally joins. As they go to the studio, they slowly try to explain to Mako about how a guitar actually works, which ends up being pretty overwhelming. After she struggles with trying to understand how even an amp works, they ask her to just turn up the volume and play something. In 
just for a second, even if it was just coincidence, the way she set up her amp was exactly the same as Tanida's. This scene is really cool. And after that, now, they are really committed. As Mako keeps studying and giving her all, she ends up getting a new look at the stunning lyrics, and starts to slowly realize that it wasn't really a breakup song as she thought, but a song about parting ways with the person that Taneda had been. And just at the right time, things start to move forward, with them finally getting a chance to play a live show as an opening band. The show was going to be in a month, but even without having not nearly enough time to practice, Mako decides to do it, with the idea that, in that show, she wants to try and play Solanin. In this last thread, we see Mako as she deals with the anxiety of the incoming performance and feelings of the enormous weight of life creeping in, trying to understand where she is right now and where should she go. And it's not only her, we get a look on everyone, how they're being affected by all that's happened and all their struggles. In here, we have a beautiful scene with Mako and Rip, that acts like the last burst of emotions before the show, where they talk about not being able to get over about Taneda, how they can't help but be brought to tears, and how for the last time, they just want to let all those emotions out. So, just like that, the day of the show arrives. Their nerves are getting to them, whereas they are about to finally go on stage, but beyond all that, for some reason, it just didn't help but feel excited feel happy. And we even see the agent from the label appearing again, talking about how of his conversation with the boy with glasses, his outlook changed, and he's once again started to figure out what's really important for him. And oblivious to all that's happened, he asks why Taneda isn't with them anymore, but says that he won't push for an answer and will definitely pay attention to their band tonight. And just like that, the show is finally about to start. Reading all of this up to this point was extremely hard. I felt as I had seen a reflection of everything I had and was going through. Things that showed me the ugliest parts of what I was giving my life to pursue, and had a realistic view of reality just thrown right into my face. A reality that was really hard to come to terms with. But it was right here, with them finally on stage, lighted by the spotlights, that I was reminded of one thing. Something that, through all the tragedy and pain that surfaced while reading through this manga, I had completely forgotten. And that's the fact that music is really fucking awesome. When, with all the burst of emotions and feelings that just happened, something that in a way gave reason to off their story, they are finally allowed to rest. And after that, they just need to keep moving forward. Mako decides to move from her apartment, finds a new job, and life never really stops. She just has to keep up with it as best as she can. And it's with everyone together that we finally reach the end of this beautiful story. If you watched this video until now, honestly, thank you so much. It was a little more serious than what I'm used to, and as I'm pretty new to this, doing all the narration and editing with all the manga panels was pretty hard. And also, maybe you didn't notice, but I've made almost every song that plays just for this video. And I do more serious music with vocals and stuff on Spotify, so feel free to check it out. It can be a little weird, but who knows, maybe you'll find some value on it. The songs that I've made for this video and my Twitter are also on the description. So feel free to check them out as well. And if you think that this video deserves it, maybe leave a like. There are many more videos that I want to do as well, so feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. It really helps a lot and I'm pretty new to this, so feedback is pretty important. But this is it, and once again, thank you so much.